Welcome to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for joining us. Well, we're certainly no strangers to drought here in northern Nevada, but we are in our fourth year of dry weather, which means our water reserves are going to be taking a hit. Well, John Irwin with the Truckee Meadows Water Authority is here to talk about that with us. John, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome, Ariana. Okay, so I want to start with general stuff. Where does our water supply stand now in comparison to, say, this time last year? This year, uh, in the hundred and some odd years of keeping track of records, this year happens to be the worst one of record. I was in a meeting earlier today and we were told the Tahoe snowpack is 5% of average. Typically this time of year it's somewhere up in the at least 30, potentially 50% mm -hmm. of average. Also is told that the snowpack for the Truckee River Basin typically is in the, we'd like to see it in the 60 to 100% of average, we're down around the 20%. So after four consecutive dry years in a row, this is perhaps the worst year of record for snowpack precipitation, and hence that's going to affect our water supply for the coming season. Now we've seen these patterns before. <clears throat> is this one kind of similar to what we've seen in the past, or does it stand out? This one is kind of unique because the last, uh, when we do our drought planning, the last severe period we had was from 1987 through 1994. And there was a period in there from 91 to 93 where we had a couple uh, significant dry years, nothing like what we've seen this year. But this is the fourth dry year in a row. Now, 2012, 13, and 14 were not as dry as the 90, 91, 92 period. But this one year alone kind of makes up for those good years in dry periods. So as a whole, uh, when we look in, in the period that we're in, four years of consecutive dry, yeah, that's unique. But in terms of the impact of this one year alone, it is not, sta it stands out by itself, but in terms of an overall cycle when compared to an eight year period of the 92, the, the 80, 87 to 94 period, um, we just don't know the outcome quite yet of how it's gonna compare in total. I mean, how dire is the circumstance? <clears throat> Should we be concerned at this point? In, in terms of making the water supply, no. Uh, we actually plan for events like this. This is not unique in the fact that we have not experienced dry patterns before, dr consecutive dry years before. The fact that we have this fourth one coming up is unique, but again, we have the reserves, our groundwater reserves, our upstream reservoir reserves, and our recharge reserves that we've built up. So we have those available to us in the event of a situation like this, which is a critical year. So we'll have the supplies. What we'll be looking for with our customers coming up, I'm sure we'll get to it here in a little bit, what are we gonna ask customers to do? Uh, this year, we're gonna ask for some things to happen a little sooner rather than what we did last year. We asked for that in the late July, August period. This year, we're gonna be starting our messaging early in April. Now, Tom was said before that you <laughs> have planned for a nine year drought cycle. Now that we're in year four, is it safe to say we, we have five years left, or is that not quite accurate? That's, that's a great question. I was just on the phone with somebody else asking the same thing, and this is a hard thing for folks to get in that we do not have a bucket full of nine-year supply. What we have are multiple buckets that we may have to use, but we refill them every year. For example, uh, we have Independence Lake. We own 17,000 acre feet of the storage rights in Independence Lake. It's going to be full as we start the season, but every fall we have to release 3,000 acre feet out of the reservoir. We have to release it. Well, we recapture that in another reservoir so that we can fill Independence up again. Hmm. That, that use refill period occurs every year, in, even in a dry year, in a wet year. So when we talk about the dry cycle, the nine year period that we plan for, what happens in that period are we have consecutive dry periods, we have dry years, but then there are always refill periods to fill the reserves back up. We're gonna use some this summer, but we're gonna fill them back up again. Hopefully we'll be able to fill them up all the way, but it remains to be seen depending on next year's winter period. Now, if this were to drag out for several more years, is there a point that we could hit where it would be a critical point in a lack of water? I mean, do, is there a timeline for that? Interesting question. I, I like to think of it this way. It's kind of the, what if it never rains again? Right. That's kind of the scenario that's being presented. And I kind of back away from it and said, how realistic is that scenario? 
based on what we know, based on the history that we know, the other concepts that let's be speculating about it's not going to rain again, or if it's a fifth dry year, sixth dry year, what happens if? We will continue to fill our reserves. We'll continue to recharge in the wintertime, particularly in the wintertime, because the only person or the only entity that's diverting water for use at that time outside of the Truckee Carson Irrigation District is Tumwa. So we'll be diverting water in the winter and putting that underground, building up that reserve. We may be using some of our upstream reserves. Hopefully they'll refill, but we'll also be refilling our recharge reserves as well, building up the groundwater. So how long can this go? We plan for nine. Candidly, I think we can probably go upwards of 12 or 15 years in an extended dry cycle with the current patterns that we have. Well, that's somewhat reassuring. The tricky part here is we know it's going to rain. We know it's going to snow. We just don't know when or how much. That's Alger's problem, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now speaking of some of our upstream reserves, obviously Lake Tahoe is our biggest one. It dropped below its natural rim this year for the first time in a long time. Um, that obviously has a big effect on Truckee River. Um, is there a possibility that with this continuing dry pattern, if it continues, um, Tahoe stays below its rim, Truckee doesn't have a source, could it dry up completely? The uh, Tahoe below the rim is not a unique occurrence. It happens amazingly quite often. Uh, what happens is in the, in the period that I've talked about, 87 to 94, we had Lake Tahoe below the rim for about a four, almost a five year period. Interesting though, at the end of that, or in the middle of that period, we had a snowpack that the lake came up two and a half feet. Mm -hmm. In some instances, the lake would come up four and a half or even six feet. So it's really hard to say how long we will be below the rim. This year, we may not even get above the rim, maybe that much or so, but then we're back below the rim. And it'll continue to go down mainly through evaporation, not through releases. Mm -hmm. And then we just, again, I understand hope is not necessarily a strategy, but as planning people, you, we have to plan on what we know and anticipate, we anticipate the worst, but we hope for the best when we do our planning. And so again, Tahoe will be below the rim all season. Uh, it'll get lower as we go along. This is not unique. It's happened before, not just in 87 to 92. Also, it happened back in the uh, 28 to 35 period as well. And we've done a little bit of research doing some tree ring analysis, and we've seen over a 350 year period that we get into these eight year dry cycles, then we have recovery. Then we may get into another two year, three year, or even another eight year cycle. I can't say if we're in the, are we in the middle of this dry cycle? Are we at the start of a longer cycle? Just can't tell you where we are. Yeah. But we've planned for uh, what we know to be the worst and worst condition now. And I can't say that this current condition is worse than the 87 to 94. I can't say that yet, because we're not finished yet. We what's, so what's the picture for the Truckee <clears throat> looking like going into the warmer weather seasons? The Truckee will, will have some runoff come late April and May, and then what will happen is the, the flow in the Truckee River will, in essence, diminish, and it will diminish rapidly. There will be no water coming out of Lake Tahoe to support river rates. There will be no water coming out of Boca to support river rates. Very little coming out of Prosser, a couple CF, a very small amount. Nothing coming out of Stampede. So when we get into the middle of summer, the, there may be some natural flow coming off some of the side creeks, but for the most part, the water that'll be in the Truckee River, uh, probably late June all the way through September will be water that we'll, we'll be releasing out of, perhaps out of Donner, perhaps out of Stampede, and then also perhaps out of Independence. So it won't completely dry up then? It won't completely dry up, but um, if you lost that quarter that you had in your pocket last river, yeah, last year when you were on your inner tube, this would be the year to go find it. Or that engagement ring. <laughs> that, yeah, precisely. Into the river. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> go hunting off the Virginia Street Bridge. Precisely. <laughs> this is a good year to do that. It's a unique experience. Uh, people should go down and look at it, at how extreme the event may be. I kind of like to look at it. We live in a dry desert community. It's a high desert interrupted by wet. In other words, we're always in a dry period. And uh, I think people need to adjust to the fact that dry may be something that we haven't had in a while because the community's changed, the dynamic has changed, the culture's changed. And 
And so when I grew up here, oh yeah, we just let the hose run. Now we don't let the hose run. Yeah. Use water smartly, use it efficiently. Try not to waste it, let's be smart about it. Okay, now my last question for you before we take a quick break. Uh, is there any concern that this low water supply will have any effect on our water quality? Great question. I'm probably not the, the right guy to ask about that. Obviously, when you have lower flows, you have not a swift a river stream, and so you can have some algae buildup and that sort of stuff. But I would defer that to our water quality people. They can answer that. I can give you the name, too, so he can come and talk to you, too. Okay. Well, we have a lot more to get to. John, that's perfect for now. We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, coming up, we will take another look at our water problem and find out about ways we can all help conserve our resources right after the break.